Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crempton News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. Let's get started. New tonight, Spokane County Commissioners are expected to declare an emergency at Camp Hope tomorrow, giving Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich more tools to rapidly shut down the state's largest homeless camp. Crempton's Kyle Simchuk spoke with the sheriff to learn how the plans to move forward and just how soon the camp could be cleared out. This is an emergency in our, our community. We have winter weather approaching. We have people living in substandard conditions in that camp. We have a neighborhood that is suffering heavily. Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich moving forward with plans to remove people and their belongings off the Department of Transportation's property and tomorrow setting up an emergency operations center, a place for service providers and officials to meet as they work toward the common goal of getting people into shelters before the cold weather sets in. But I can tell you within four weeks I want this done. The sheriff says there are plans to build an extra 100 beds at the Trent shelter, and Catholic Charities is expected to open the former Quality Inn by December 1st, with room for 100 homeless men and women. If we do need that extra 100 beds, it may be take us another two weeks. Um, we'll see. We're, we're playing that out. Jules Helping Hands called the sheriff's timeline unrealistic, claiming there are not enough low shelter beds available. They also criticized the sheriff, pointing out that he's never been to the camp. But I am going to go to the camp. What are you going to show me that I don't already know? Knezovich says he's had very productive meetings with the city, county, and service providers, but conversations with the state have stalled. Today, Washdot said the sheriff's emergency operations center is not needed, saying the state is already implementing all of the county's proposed actions. Washdot says they've been working to close the camp since spring. You could have had this camp emptied if you've really been truly working on this since April. The sheriff says the state is refusing to come to the table. Washdot claims it's the other way around. Why can't we drop the luggage, act like adults, work together for this community? That's my question to the state. Why do you keep throwing red herrings? Is it the fact that you just want this to continue? If that's the case, shame on you all. We'll do it on our own. That was Kyle Simchuk reporting. Meanwhile, city and county officials will meet at City Hall tomorrow to provide an update on the camp, along with addressing growing concerns from neighbors. Mayor Woodward, Mary Cooney, and Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich are among those anticipated speakers. And we are learning new information about the homeless camp near I-90. Tonight, we can confirm the city of Spokane has issued several citations to the nonprofit Jules Helping Hands. They are cited for various illegal activities at the homeless camp on Washdot property, including failing to get a permit for that cooling tent. A city spokesperson told us citations are being issued daily to Jules Helping Hands, with the earliest issued on September 23rd. In a Facebook post by Jules, they say they have now had 16 citations, totaling more than $91,000. Founder Julie Garcia says they plan to contest the fines. We have requested copies of the citations through a public records request to the city of Spokane. New tonight, City Council approved the Spokane Airport's $174 million budget for 2023. This represents an almost 47% increase from last year's budget. According to the Spokane Airport Board, the sharp jump is due to the increasing number of travelers that will go through the airport as our region continues to recover from the pandemic. Another reason for the massive budget increase is the new $150 million renovation and expansion of the Concourse C terminal. Well, new tonight, pediatricians in the Northwest warning that respiratory related illnesses are spreading due to viruses such as RSV. After weeks of poor air quality and seasonal changes, physicians in Seattle and Tacoma say they are seeing unprecedented volumes of children with respiratory illnesses. Numbers from Mary Bridge Children's Hospital show more than half of the visits to the ER are respiratory related. Dr. Grant Keeney says that after two years of at-home learning, elementary students are particularly susceptible to respiratory viruses like RSV. Now the strict protocols used to stop the spread of COVID aren't being followed so closely. Now that some of those uh, behaviors aren't being as commonly uh, used, um, those kids' immune systems are seeing viruses again for the first time in a while and really, um, really reacting uh, to that. According to the CDC, there isn't a vaccine against the RSV virus specifically, but Dr. Keeney advised parents to make sure to keep up with habits that were used to keep COVID at bay, like hand washing, covering your mouth or you're covering your mouth rather when you sneeze or cough, or if you feel sick, then just stay at home. 
Well, earlier today we heard from investigators about what may have caused a float plane to crash into Puget Sound near Whidbey Island, killing 10 people. Investigators believe that one part might be responsible for the plane going down. This is the first update from the NTSB since it pulled the wreckage off the bottom of the sea floor. The NTSB says it was able to recover about 85% of the plane. They have honed in on one part of the plane, the horizontal stabilizer actuator, which controls the pitch or up and down of that DHC-3 Otter seaplane, and it was separated from the plane. An essential lock ring was not recovered. It could be everything from it wasn't put together or held together uh, correctly. It came apart somehow or something else that we haven't yet determined. The last time this Otter seaplane was overhauled was April of this year. It is unclear if the actuator was put back together correctly. Now the NTSB is requesting manufacturers release instructions on how to ensure the lock ring is in place correctly. Spokane native Sandy Williams and her partner were among those who died in the float plane crash. So today the Carl Maxey Center here in Spokane held a sickle cell blood drive in Sandy's honor. According to the CDC, sickle cell disease is a group of red blood cell disorders that affect hemoglobin, that protein that carries oxygen through the body, and people with sickle cell disorder may need more blood transfusions than the average person. Sickle cell disproportionately impacts the black community. One in 13 black babies are born with the sickle cell trait. Organizers say they hope to continue providing this service for Spokane's black community. All right, switching gears to weather now. If there was any doubt that fall is now upon us, that doubt is now gone because it was cold and rainy basically all day long. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Legoo with more on what the rest of the work week is looking like. Jeremy? Uh, cold and rainy, Mark. Oh, perfect. Okay. Back to, no, I'm kidding. Not back to you. Let's talk about it. Right now, we sit at a cool 43 degrees. Believe it or not, that's only one degree shy of where we topped out today. It's that kind of warm this evening. Or was it that kind of cool all day? Even through noon, we were in the 30s. Still talking about a bit of snow in the northern Cascades and the Rockies. Basically, it kind of continues overnight with a predominantly zonal push or west to east push. We're seeing a bulk of that snow stay in high elevations. Interesting stuff happening over on the west side, though. A few storms today, basically along our convergence zone. There's a really interesting convergence zone that sets up coming out of the Puget Sound where everything kind of funnels in there. You oftentimes get convection or heavy snowfall this time of year, and that's going to be the case there. But for the rest of us, not much until tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, we get our push of moisture. I think it arrives for us after dark and then moves out early Wednesday. So another couple cool rainy days. And then Thursday, we should dry back out. All right, sounds good, Jeremy. We'll check back in with you later in the show. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. Earlier today, the Spokane Parks Board voted against a resolution to make Lincoln Park the new site for the official South Hill Dog Park. Spokane Parks Board President Jennifer Ogden closed the meeting by saying the search continues to find and build a dog park on the South Hill. And while the Parks Department may be going back to the drawing board, the construction timeline at this point has not changed. So construction is still expected for spring of 2023. Also new tonight, we just spoke with the Grant County Sheriff's Office who tells us the shelter in place order will be extended until tomorrow morning. The Sheriff's Office says the order is in effect for people in a mile radius of the Wilbur Ellis fertilizer plant, plant rather that caught fire and burned down yesterday afternoon. So residents are advised to keep indoors, keep windows shut, avoid going outdoors and turn off any outdoor in air, air intakes rather due to chemicals in the air from the smoke. Well, at this hour, Spokane police are investigating a body found by the Spokane River yesterday afternoon. The body was found in the area of West Riverside and South A Street. Police say the body was found under suspicious circumstances and suspect foul play may be involved. They also say there appears to be no danger to the community at this time. We will continue to bring you updates on this story as we learn more. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them directly to your phone. Well, we learned of a breaking development tonight in the apartment fire that killed six people in Wisconsin on Friday. Wisconsin police now believe that fire may have been a murder-suicide. Officials say all six victims who were family members suffered a single gunshot wound. Meanwhile, the family's father, Connor McKissick, was determined to suffer a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police say there was also evidence of an ignitable fluid in the apartment, and they recovered several firearms from the home as well. 
And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time. But don't go to bed just yet. For the first time, every Spokane County voter will elect five county commissioners instead of three this November. How that will impact who's representing your neighborhood. Plus, if you are a voter in Grant County, you may run into an issue while submitting your ballot. What you need to know to make sure your vote counts. We are back in just 90 seconds.